Hey, Pete here for Studio Live today, and in this video, I'll be recording an acoustic guitar into GarageBand here on my iPad. I'm gonna be doing it in two different ways. I'm gonna record using a large diaphragm condenser microphone into an audio interface, and I'm also going to connect direct from the output of the guitar into the interface as well. I'm gonna do that at the same time. So, let's go. Okay, now there are probably hundreds if not thousands of ways to record an acoustic guitar, but what I'm gonna do today is I've got my Steinberg UR12, I use that on almost every video, and I'm going to be setting up a large diaphragm condenser to capture the direct acoustic guitar sound, but I'm also going to be plugging in a guitar cable here, plugging that into the other input of my Steinberg UR12 so that I can track two tracks at the same time for this guitar part, and then I can blend those two together to get the right level of attack on the guitar, but also a nice room sound and a nice ambient sound here for this guitar. So let's jump in and let's set this up now, ready to record. Okay, so here is the microphone that I'm going to be using in this recording. This is the MXL 550 large diaphragm condenser. So I've got it on a mic stand here, and I'm gonna set this sucker up in front of where I'm gonna record my acoustic guitar, and we'll record a take. We'll also plug in to our interface here, the UR12, via the instrument jack. So let's get that set up now. Okay, we're gonna use a red microphone cable because red makes it go faster, and it matches my microphone. So we'll plug that end in there. The other end is going to go in to our Steinberg UR12. So we'll plug the other end of the XLR, in there like so. Okay, here's our guitar cable. We're going to plug this end into the high Z or high Z input here on our Steinberg UR12. And the other end here is gonna go into our guitar. So we've now got our MXL550 large diaphragm condenser and our guitar cable here. Our two channels are set up here. Now let's jump in and set up this ready to record here in GarageBand to record some guitar. Okay, so here is our scratch acoustic guitar track. We won't do that. We'll tap on this and we'll tap duplicate. And there is our new track. We're gonna mute the old track. Now, we've gotta do a couple of things here. We're gonna come into this setting here. Now, we're gonna change the channel here. And input one is our mic pre. So that's gonna be this uh, microphone that's just out of shot here. So this one is gonna be our mic. We can then go back to our settings here, tap again to duplicate again. And now this track here is going to be our input two. So we've got a channel, input two, and this is going to be our direct line in. Now, what I wanna do here is actually rename these so that we know that that's what we've got here. We're gonna tap on this one, we're gonna tap again, and we're going to go rename, call this one git AC, and I'm gonna put mic, M-I-C, our other track, and we'll go git AC, and we're gonna put line. So now we really clearly know that we've got our two guitar tracks here. One is our microphone, and one is gonna be our line input. So now all I need to do is grab my guitar, plug in, get this track playing, and then start recording our acoustic guitar part here in GarageBand. Okay, so I'm in a less than ideal position here to be recording uh, this acoustic guitar because I'm pretty close to my PC, I would ordinarily get myself further away over that side of the studio, but I need it to be set up here so that I can record on the camera and that we can capture everything here. So uh, we might get a little bit of additional room noise or background sound that we wouldn't ordinarily want, but that's okay, we will go with it. So I have my acoustic guitar. At the moment I'm not plugged in and there's no sound coming through here at all. We don't even have our monitoring on, so you can't really see this well here. Hopefully my screen recording is working today. We will soon find out. So what we need to do is we actually need to record enable both of these tracks. So we have that there. Now you can hear, I mean you can see that my mic is coming through there, which is all good. And when I play here, nothing is coming through because I haven't plugged in my guitar cable yet. So I'm gonna plug the guitar cable into my acoustic guitar at the back here. And now, I'm coming through nicely on both channels. I do need to now position my microphone. So I'm gonna do that in a moment, but I just wanna make sure first and foremost that we're coming through on both of those channels. Now, what I do need to, of course, do is monitor so that I can actually hear what's going on. I can turn these monitor options on, and I've also realized that I haven't actually plugged in my headphones. So they're gonna go into the Steinberg UI12. 
And now, oh, there I can hear. I can hear that coming through. So the first thing I'll normally do here is turn up the volume of, I'll turn those monitors off for a moment because I can hear my own voice. I'm gonna turn up the microphone volume and then turn down the line in volume because the, vol the microphone here is probably gonna be my primary source and I'm gonna use the line in just as some additional sort of attack sound and just to make sure that the sound's coming through nice and full. We need to now make sure that we're not gonna peak anywhere here on the UR12, so. Both my peak lights are actually coming on there, so I'm going to have to dial back both of these inputs and I'm gonna turn my monitor back on now so I can actually hear it even though it's gonna give my voice some reverb. I'm just using the nice room preset for these uh, acoustic guitars at the moment. Which is not perfect, but it doesn't sound bad. So we probably don't actually have quite enough on the mic, so let's just dial that up a little bit. I'm watching my peak lights here when I play. Okay, let's do a really quick test record. We'll just solo these tracks. And all I'm gonna do here is I'm just looking for levels. So I just wanna make sure that these levels are gonna be okay. We'll hit record. And we don't really care about the metronome here at this point. So we're just gonna. Okay, they look not too bad actually. Yep, I'm pretty happy with that. So we're gonna stop and we'll undo. Now what you would have seen there is that when we have two tracks enabled, we can actually record two tracks at once, which is the whole point of what we're doing here. So with this interface, we just have a mic pre and a line in. I've also got a Steinberg UR44 over there, which I'll use another day, not today, but um, I'll show you that where we can record up to four independent mic pre's or four inputs at the same time. Actually, technically up to six inputs, but we won't get technical with that right now. For now, we just want to use this microphone to capture because most people will either be using the internal mic here, they maybe have an interface where you can use one mic, or maybe an interface like this one where you can incorporate the line in and the mic at the same time. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, what about this microphone placement? So I'm going to actually just turn off that one, sorry, wrong one. I'm gonna turn off that one and now, all I can hear, all that's being monitored and that's coming through this signal, is the microphone there. So what we can do is we can move this microphone to where we want it to be. So if you've got a good mic stand like this, it's gonna make life easier because you can actually redirect your microphone. And what you can do, so at the moment, I'm pointing sort of down here towards around about the 12th fret. So I'm getting this sort of sound. So I'm not getting a whole lot of bottom end in this sound, which is probably what I'm gonna go for here. I want, it's a trebly kind of sound I'm going for in this one, sort of more mid to, to top range as opposed to low, low mid. But what I can do though, is if I point the microphone, so the front of the microphone more towards the sound hole, I'm gonna get a different sound. So I get a fuller sound, but I also get more pick noise because I'm closer to there. In fact, I'm probably too close, so I need to back that off a little bit. And, and once again, if I turn it all the way up, if I wanted to get a different sound entirely, I can point it up to the top of the neck of the guitar and I get a very distant kind of sound. So what I actually want here, and this is what I use most of the time, is a large diaphragm condenser. I'm above it, this is the other thing to keep in mind because when you play guitar, you breathe. And if you have it sort of pointing out like this, you end up breathing into the microphone, which is a really unpleasant sound, as you just heard then. So what I tend to do is have my microphone about there, got about a one foot distance, half, half to three quarters of a meter away, and kind of pointing in here at your 12th fret. And that seems to be a good compromise position to get a... a nice bright sound where you don't get too much sort of boominess from the sound hole and you're not too thin. We'll bring back in the line in. All right, now I just need to unmute those, I mean unmute, unsolo those, and then come in and listen 
to what my monitoring level is going to be like when I'm playing the rest of the track. So we'll just jump into the track here and I'm going to play back without recording with my monitor on here. Okay, I've noticed two things. First of all, I'm peaking here. I'm gonna to have to turn down my input volume back a little bit. I was trying to play a bit louder to compete with the sound. And I've said this a bunch of times, but if you have a choice between being too loud or too soft, be too soft. You can up the volume really easily in a digital environment. You cannot come back from clipping if you've already clipped a signal. We need to bring our output volumes up louder here. And we probably need to turn down some of the volumes of everything else, so. Okay, not bad, the piano's still a bit loud. We'll turn the piano down. This is always a little bit fiddly, just trying to find the volume combinations. Let's now come back to here and check this volume level again. Okay, I think that's gonna be about right, so I think. That's gonna help us. So that took a little bit of time, yes, granted, but now we've got our volume levels ready. I can set myself up here. Let's just line ourselves up here. We don't need to hear the whole intro. We've got our record set. We've got our monitors on, our guitars coming through. And we're ready to go. So let's hit record. You can see we've got the little number two here, which means we're recording two tracks because they're both enabled, they're both monitored. So let's record and give this a go. Okay, not bad, an okay start. I'm gonna undo it though. <laughs> I need a little bit more volume here and a little bit less on the rest of it. I'm gonna turn my overall output volume up too, just so I can hear a bit more in my headphones. And I've got the metronome on now. I realized I didn't have the metronome on. I need that to work out when we actually start. So let's try this one again. Wrong chord progression, not to worry, we can do it again, let's go. Okay, so we did okay there until we hit that part where we didn't do okay, so let's see if we can actually cut in there because we did all right up to this chord change here. So we just kind of lost the rhythm there, so we're going to dial that back, dial that back, and we're gonna cut in here. So we need to come in with a... There we go, let's uh, hit this again, we can fix the transition afterwards, but we're gonna start recording. I had a feeling I would play the wrong chord there. I don't know why, but I just thought that I wouldn't move into that transition well. Let's move this back again, like so and drag back. Oh, don't do that both at the same time. I don't even know how I did that. Anyway, so this is gonna come into here. Let's try this again. Okay, 
Okay, once again, I got that completely wrong because at the end there it just goes from a and it just repeats that to the rest of it. So. And I needed a better sound with that, so we're going to do this one again. One more time with feeling. Okay, that was better. A little bit better, much better. It was better. Uh, we did have to track it in three different parts, as you can see there, but we are almost there. I'm gonna turn off my monitors because I can hear that in my headphones. So that's what we've got for now. We're gonna maybe do some editing. There might be some overdubbing that we do later, but in par as far as our tracking goes, I kind of like that. It's sounding okay. We'll play it back now and just get the levels back into balance. And then I think we're good for our acoustic guitar for now. Okay, so here we are back in our mix with our two freshly recorded acoustic tracks. Now what I'm gonna do is, let's just play these two tracks by themselves to get the mix within themselves correct first and foremost. And I'll play you the difference of the sound between our first track here, our microphone on our large diaphragm condenser and our direct line input. So together, let's just go to the start and hear those. So not bad, we've got a nice sort of rich sound. There's probably a little bit too much pick noise there, if I'm really honest, that I probably should have had the microphone a little bit further away. But if we just listen to the microphone alone, let's hear what that sounds like. And now let's just listen to just the line input. A really different sound, yes. Yeah? So if we turn these up to the same volume and I'll switch between the two, we'll start with the line input, we'll go back to the microphone and you'll hear why I think it's important to actually have a real microphone to mic up your acoustic guitar rather than just use a line in. So here's the line in and then we'll switch back to the microphone. Okay, and now if we go back to our microphone sound, it sounds like this. So you can hear that there's a different sort of sound. You get a lot more sort of ambient room kind of sound in this one. It's a lot more realistic. This one here sounds a bit harsh. And I could play around with the EQ with the settings. I probably could have dialed in some better settings on my acoustic, but what I actually want to do is just drop the level of this one right down and have this as my main sound and this one sort of underneath because I get a little bit more of the attack and the transient on this one, but this one here gives me a little bit more of that real acoustic feel. So if we play both of these together. You can hear, or at least I think, that the sum of the parts is better than any of those two individual sounds. So that's why I like to record two guitars. Now let's bring this back into our mix here and play it with the rest of our track. So you can hear there that it just adds that fullness. So when we're in our sort of main loud parts, we've got the support of the acoustic guitar for the rest of the guitars. And then when they drop out and do their sort of muted parts during the verses, the acoustic kind of comes up. So it's naturally ebbing and flowing in and out of this mix. So if I play it from here again, you'll hear that in this part, it's going to be like this.
So you can barely even hear it. If you're not listening for it, you don't hear it there. But what, listen to what happens when we transition back into the verse here. So you can hear how that sort of brings it up and without any automation, we can just get it to sit in the mix and then pop back out of the mix. And keep in mind, we haven't done any EQing. We haven't changed anything away from the default settings at this stage. So this has still got some room to move when we start doing our mixing. But so let's now add back in these vocals and hear what it sounds like through these verse sections with the vocals as well. And keep in mind, these vocals have not been actually tracked. These are our scratch vocals from our original songwriting phase. So. Keep in mind when you hear that here, but you'll just hear how they sound with the vocals now. One thing you always say is look out for yourself. Nobody else is gonna keep you safe and make you satisfied. And it's something that I just can't come to terms with. So you can keep yourself protected from society and all. So there you go, you can hear that during the quieter parts, during the verses, the acoustic guitar is almost like the main driving instrument. And then when it hits the chorus, the acoustic's still there, but it kind of sits underneath a little bit. So that's still that's the sound I was going for here. As I said, I've got some work to do in terms of mixing and actually adding some EQ, making sure this sits well in the mix. Now, what I could have done is recorded a double of this acoustic, and that may be something I do during the overdubbing process to give that an even fuller sound. But because this isn't really a, an acoustic, acoustic track, I think I'm going to get away with just a one acoustic with its two tracks there sitting underneath each other, providing that backing for the track in a mono sitting in the middle. That is it. That is our acoustic guitar recording. I hope you found this interesting that we showed how we can set up, we can record acoustic either via microphone or via line in. We can blend those sounds together here in GarageBand and then we can make sure that those sit nicely in our track. And once again, we've still got all of that mixing phase to go where we can do our EQing and change our reverb, our delay, all of our other settings to make sure it's sounding even better. But for now, it's sounding okay in our mix. Now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play us out with the track as it stands. And again, I'm gonna take off my vocals, actually. No, let's leave them in. You know what, let's leave in the vocals. So this is kind of as close to a full version as we've got at this stage. Still needs a lot of work, but you're starting to hear how the song's taking shape, how it's coming together. So once again, here it is for the birds. Yeah. 
for the free.